Hello everyone and welcome to Watch Complications. I'm Brian. This is the next video in my series on making custom watches. We are putting a couple of low-cost prototypes together and today I'm going to put on the hands. So we'll get to that in a second, but first subscribe to the channel. First, real quick, I want to show you what's on my wrist today. It's a beautiful summer day outside and one of my favorite watches to wear, particularly over the summer, is my Chris Reward C1 Small Seconds, which I've showed in some videos before. Um, not everyone's cup of tea in terms of the oversized small seconds and the, and the balance with the logo at nine, but this is one of my, really my favorite summer watches to wear. There's upside down. Um, just simple, clean, lightweight, perfect dimensions. It's got their in-house uh, caliber SH21. Love this watch. But anyway, let's get to putting those hands on the watches. All right, now that we have the logo on the dial, the dial on the movement, I'm going to attach the hands. We have the three hands, hour, minute, and second, and I'll go through the process of putting these on the movement. So let's start with the hour hand, and I'm going to use this pusher that you can see has a 1.5 at one end and a 2.0 at the other, 2.0 millimeter. The hour hand on this movement is 2.0 millimeter. And the easiest way to go about putting the hands on a movement like this, let me zoom in a little bit here, like that, is to use a little bit of Rodico to sort of pick up the hand and put it in place. And then I'll use the pusher to put the hand on the movement. I'll also state that uh, You want to have the stem in so you can set the hour hand to 12 once you have it on the movement. Now that I have the hand on here, I'm just going to push this down. Just make sure it's nice and even. And that should press down just fine like that. And then what I'll do is I'll actually kind of tilt it up. I'll show you and kind of, I'll kind of look at it from the side and see a lot of times the hands will be bent up or down a little bit. And you want to make sure it's sort of as level as possible. And so you might have to, you know, bend it toward the base a little bit, depending on the hand itself. This one's angled up a little bit, so if they're, the thing is, is if, if they're angled in any way, it may interfere with the other hands. And so, what I will do, and the tool I use for this sometimes varies. I'm actually going to take a Q-tip that has the end torn off of it, and I'm going to push it at the base of this to bend the hand down just a hair using plastic when possible just because metal on metal is never a good idea with a watch and now that's bent down just a little bit more so it won't interfere with the minute hand now what I want to do is pull this stem out to the setting and then and make sure that this turns And I'm going to take that around and then and set it to 12. Exactly. Because then that's where we're going to want it to set the minute hand. Okay, so that's exactly at 12. So for the minute hand, I'll also use this hand pusher since the other end is a 1.5. So this, this pusher is meant for this particular type of movement, which is the ETA 6400 series. And so it has the two on one end and 1.5 on the other. I do have a stand pusher. I'll use that for the small second. And I have 
lots of sizes for it, but in terms of the hand fittings, but I'll, I'll use this little hand one for now on this particular watch. So again, use the rod cutter sort of get it where I want it. And I want this to be exactly a 12, basically. So I'm gonna use this to sort of get it in place. One thing I'll do with this is I will use the pusher to get the hand on the movement. And then once I have it about where I want, I will again use some sort of plastic to sort of ensure that it is about where I want it in terms of being centered. Basically, you have to line up these hands so they are both exactly at 12 o'clock. So that way, once you've got it pushed fully on, Obviously, the time you want it to be set correctly, or you want to be able to set the time correctly. I may need to move the hour hand to the left a little bit. And because this is filled with loom, I do not want to push on that at all, because it would crack the loom. So I want to set the minute hand to the side, move the hour hand back a little bit so it's pointing directly at 12. I had it a little bit off. So, move this back. Whistle while you work. Do, 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 do. What's nice about wearing gloves is you can use your fingers. To again get it kind of exactly where you want it. And there I've kind of got everything pointed at 12, so now I just need to push it on in that location without twisting it any. So I'll get it started. Again, I'm not gonna do a final push until I got it exactly where I want it. stem out to the setting see how that 12 moves I've got it about exactly where I want and you'll hear just the tiniest of clicks when you push down on the hand just a, a slight little a very subtle pop you'll hear that the hand has gone down as far as it will go. And now I've got it 12. If I need to maneuver it any, I will, but that is perfect. And by the way, I'm looking at it under magnification. If you wonder how I am so sure, and then I do the same thing. I'll turn this on its side so I can see, does the minute hand have clearance over the hour hand when I'm moving it? And it's actually bent up quite a bit, almost too much. So what I'm gonna do is again, I'm gonna use my little plastic uh, tube. I'm gonna push it down on this close to the base. You still wanna leave clearance for the hour but you also want it to be fairly flat and not sticking up because you don't want to be, you know, hitting the case or something like that in a weird way. So sometimes you got to push it a little bit at the base. There we go. All right, so that's good. those hands are exactly where I want them and all right so we got the hour in the minute now we got to do the seconds for that I'm gonna use my stand pusher okay so for the 
a small second, I'm going to use my stand pusher. I have a flat end, flat tip, and I will use that to push the small second on. This one's particularly tedious. I'll try to keep my hands out of the way while I do it, but it can be a little bit of a, of a struggle. A small second hand on a watch is probably the hardest to put on, you know, like small chronograph hands or the small second complication, just because they're they're tiny. We're talking about a a pen that is size 0 0.2 millimeters, so it's tiny, and you've just got to be patient. Use Rotico. Some people use tweezers. The metal can scratch the hand or or damage the loom or something like that. So I like to use the Rodico still to get it on the pin and then use the flat pusher to push it down. So we'll do that next. So how does this work? Well, I will take the movement holder and I'll put it in here. I'll get it lined up where the pusher is centered over the small second pin. Again, it's really easiest to use the Rodico to pick it up um, much easier than a pair of tweezers. I still might need my Q-tip end. Again, it's going to be hard to show this without my hand getting in the way. But I shall try. And there's a little tube on the underneath of this. If you can see it. You can kind of see it there. There's a little tube that's going to go over the pin that's sort of sitting down in the movement. What you got to be careful with is that you don't get the tube between the pin and the edge of the hole that's actually in the dial. It can be really easy to get it misaligned and try to stick the tube down in between the pin and, and, and the hole um, cut out which I've done before. Okay. Again, I'm gonna try to move this. It's just this, it's a seconds, but I'm gonna try to get it to where it's, you know, at the 60 second mark on the small second dial. Everything's at 12, nothing's running right now. Just so it's as accurate as possible even though this is a prototype. It's more of a proof of concept. This is a watch I wanna build. And I'm looking to the side and I can see that I'm not actually on the pin. It's actually in the hole next to the pin. This is really about patience taking your time, looking close, doing it right, don't rush, never rush anything in watch making. Now I've got it on the pin, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get it started like so. And I only pushed it just slightly on the surface. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my Q-tip and just slightly push it again just to get it to the 60. Get this nice and centered. Push it down. And now it's on there. Perfect. And one other thing I might do is I'm going to take this off of here. So I'm done with the stand. So I'm going to make sure that this isn't bent down and sort of scraping the dial in any way, particularly since I have a raised logo on there. I'm going to push down here, put my, I got like a little screwdriver here, and I'm just going to bend up just a hair. just to make sure that has clearance. It looked like it was a little bit close. I'll be able to tell if it's scraping whenever I test it here in a second. I'm gonna get my Rodico, because I noticed I've got a 
some prints or something on those dial markers. So I'm making sure those are nice and clean. Look at this from the side. Looks to have clearance and should be good to go. Well, just like the other videos, I hope you're enjoying uh, this process and whether that's just you're enjoying watching it or whether this will give you some insight into doing it yourself, hopefully you're finding the videos fun. In the next video, we're going to go about cutting the stem so that it's the right length given the case that the movement is in. So until next time, make sure you subscribe if you haven't. Follow me on Instagram, watch underscore complications, and check out my blog, watchcomplications.com.